Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lens Studio Physics Game Tutorial Series. In this video we are going to be scripting the game loop that will allow the users to play the game over and over and over as much as they'd like. So let's get started. First we are going to add the start button and we're going to use the UI button provided by Snap in the asset library. So I'm going to add that and then I'm going to create an orthographic camera, rename it button camera, and I'll set it to its own layer. And then I'm going to create a screen transform. I'm going to rename that play button. And I will drag the UI button into that play button. And I need to edit it a little bit. So I'm going to go to Window, Editors, and add the 2D Editor. And now I can scale it down a little bit and put it more at the center. I'm going to change the colors to match up more with the scene. And I'm going to rename the button text to play. Cool. And now we're going to start scripting. So I'm going to input a couple things. First, I'm going to input the play button itself, and then I'm going to input the soccer ball object. So let's add those to the script. And what I'm gonna do now is set up the scene to be ready to go when it starts. So I'm turning dynamic off of the physics so that the ball doesn't move, and I'm also disabling the tube. And now I'm going to create a couple variables called ball position and ball rotation. And in the onStart function, I'm going to just get those position and rotation values, and I'll use them later when we start the game. So now I'm going to create a start game function, and I need to make it accessible outside of the script, so I'm going to type script.startgame equals start game, and now we can use it in the button. And just to test it out, I'm going to create a print that says game started, and in the button, in the event callbacks, I'm going to use the custom function. And on press down, I'm going to call that start game function. And now you can see when I press play, it prints, so it's working. All right, so now we need access to the ball physics. So I'm going to create a variable called ball physics and get that component. And now in the start game function, I'm going to set the ball physics dynamic property to false initially. And then I'm going to create a delayed callback event. This is essentially going to have something happen in a delay of however long I want. So I'm going to create this, and then inside this function, I'm going to set the dynamic physics to true again so that it starts up again. And I'm going to have this happen after a second. And then I'm also going to enable the collider object again when it starts. And I'm also going to set the play button to be disabled. Now let's test it out. When I press play, the collider is enabled, and in a second, the ball starts falling. So that's perfect. Now let's create the end game logic. So I'm going to create a function called end game, and I'm just going to add a print statement here just so that we can check to see that it's working. And now I need to access the ball's physics to see what it's colliding with. So I'm going to access that by doing ball physics dot on collision enter. And then I'm going to add a function here with event arguments. And those event arguments are going to give us access to each collision. So I'm going to create a variable called collision, set it equal to event arguments dot collision. And then I'm just going to set it again to the name of the object that it is colliding with. So I'm going to do collision dot collider dot get scene object dot name. And now it should print whatever it is colliding with. So let's test it out. And you can see in the logger here, it is providing us with the names. So now I'm going to check if the collision name is the ground, then the game will be over. So we'll run that end game function. Now we need to reset everything. So in the end game function, we're going to re-enable the play button. And we're going to disable the collider again. And let's test it out. So when it hits the ground, yep, the game is over but it's not resetting back to its original position. So this is where we get those position and rotation values. And in the start game function, we're just going to set those back to the default. Now that we have the rotation and the position being set, it should reset back to the exact same place it started. Yep, that's perfect. And that is our game loop. So that is the end of this video. In the next video, we are going to add a scoring system to the game so that users know how high they scored. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.